Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the P-chart using Minitabs version 20. Uh, the P-chart is used to uh, track defectives uh, over time, and it's used to show uh, common cause variation versus special cause variation or out of control points, et cetera. Uh, to give you a, some uh, brief background on the uh, example data that you're looking at here, uh, this data is from a fictitious Lean Six Sigma project uh, that we provide as a bunch benchmark to our green and black belts. Uh, in this project, a company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Inc., or, or PBJ Inc., who makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for kids in school all over the continental U.S. is experiencing uh, increased uh, operating costs or production costs uh, in the production of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Uh, and they're not sure why. A team of belts are assigned to the project to improve the process. Uh, in this case, we are uh, in the control phase of this DMAIC uh, project, the uh, DMAIC process. Uh, and so you're looking at here a column called total PPJ and a column called defective. So basically, we're looking at, uh, let's say this is per shift. Uh, and uh, on, first sh uh, on the first shift, uh, we make 2,502 PBJs in total, uh, and the amount of defects that came out of that 2,502. So let's uh, let's move to the assistant. The assistant is um, uh, a great tool. It makes you know uh, statistical analysis uh, easy for us. Um, uh, we use this specifically with our green belts uh, because. The assistant makes uh, stat analysis, you know, more accessible to us. Uh, we're going to move down to control charts, okay, and we are looking at defective items. So we're going to click on the P charts. As you can see here, I've already filled out uh, the dialog box. So the number of defective items column that's defective. So you'll see here on each shift. Uh, that, uh, again, uh, on the first shift, I didn't list the shift, but let's just say this first column is, uh, I'm sorry, this first row is from shift and out of 2,502 total peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I created 25 defects. Okay, so the number of defects uh, is in column C2. Okay, you'll see down here, it says, gives me an, the option of constant size for all subgroups or a column of subgroup sizes. Now, column of subgroup sizes is really when we have a variable sample size. All right, in this case we do because every row um, is, is giving me a different total of PBJ. So think of this in, in, in real life. All right, so if I'm counting the amount of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that I make per shift, uh, it's, it's going to be unlikely that I make the exact same. All right, so uh, in that case, we would have to have a column of subgroup sizes to tell us what the subgroup size, in this case, 2,502, uh, and how many defectives. And uh, again, it goes down uh, on each column. Now, let's say that I had, uh, instead of that column of total PBJs, I, I had a process to where every 2,000 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I was to then catalog the amount of defects that, that uh, were produced within that uh, subgroup. Okay, so I would click on this and I would put in 2,000. All right, so that's if your subgroup size is, is constant. Uh, in this case, it's not. All right, so down here we have, how do we determine the control limits? We're gonna estimate the data uh, uh, or from the data. So we're, we're gonna look uh, at the actual data we're given. Now, in some cases, companies decide to 
um, set the control limits and the center line. Uh, th there's some value in that, yes. But unfortunately, a lot of companies decide to set it and forget, it, which means that their control limits that they set uh, over time do not represent what the real control limits are. Uh, in an a and in essence, their, uh, their control charts are actually you know, lying to them. So we're not gonna do that. Uh, we are gonna estimate from the data. All right, we'll go ahead and hit okay. We'll come down to the report cards. The report card basically just gives us some uh, checklist of uh, some different attributes of the data um, that will help us to understand, can, can we really trust uh, the control chart? Uh, so it, it says that we have stable data, that we have good number of subgroups, uh, that, that we have a good subgroup size, uh, gives us a lot of good information about our data. All right, uh, and it'll tell you if we don't have stable data or we don't have enough subgroup, excuse me. Okay, so we'll move on to our stability reports. Uh, and our stability report just helps us to understand if we have stable data, all right? And it actually gives you some patterns on the, the right-hand side that might uh, help you to understand if we do not have stable data, all right, whether we have trends, whether we're cyclical shifts, drifts. Um, Minitab does a good way of kind of making these, these um, uh, out of control points or these instable points very easy for, for you to see, and they'll show up as red dots, all right. There's a number of rules uh, that go along with this P chart that show instability. Uh, we only, uh, I'm sorry, we teach our green belts and black belts really to only follow the first rule. Uh, and the first rule is any point that falls outside of the control limits and the control limits are uh, these two red lines. If they fall outside of those control limits, uh, we consider those unstable points and, and we also call those signals, all right? They're, they actually have a, num uh, a number of names, uh, out of control points, special causes, uh, but we call them uh, also signals because they could signal uh, something that, that we need to focus on. All right, so in this case, there is no uh, unstable points. All right, this process is only being, being affected by common cause variation. Uh, so we go up to our summary report and our summary report just kind of summarizes all the uh, previous graphs. Uh, it says, you know, is the proportion of defective items stable? Uh, and again, because there are no unstable points, it's considered a stable process. Okay, so uh, the, the P chart is, is a very useful chart again to track uh, uh, defective, uh, defectives in a process. Um, and it is a very useful tool uh, to, that can be used all throughout the uh, DMAIC process. So hopefully you have gained a little bit of uh, a little bit more knowledge of the uh, P charts. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to uh, contact me at uh, my email address, which is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. Uh, I will pull all that information uh, in the uh, uh, description at the bottom of, of this uh, video. Um, and thank you, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day.